In this slide is a brief review of protein turnover and amino acid nutrition. Now, proteins, how do proteins get turned over in human body besides digestion? Obviously, if you eat a high protein meal and the protein ends up getting into the intestine, the protein will be broken down by pancreatic enzymes, proteases that break down the amino acids from the protein by all the protein digestion that goes on in the lumen of the intestine. But in the body, where do you turn over proteins? Proteins need to be turned over because old proteins can misfold or new proteins that are being made can also misfold. And proteins, when they misfold, have to be turned over because all proteins have a half-life. Some proteins have a very long half-life. For example, collagen has a half-life well over a month. Other proteins, especially highly regulated proteins of metabolic pathways, have a very short half-life of an hour or two. One of the shortest half-lives that is known is in C-MYC. C-MYC has a half-life of 30 minutes. But all proteins have a half-life, whether it's short or whether it's long, and proteins have to be turned over. They have to be degraded down to amino acids. And so where does that happen? Where in the cell, where do you break down proteins? How are they broken down? That was reviewed earlier in Chapter 4, because in Chapter 4, we talked about and reviewed the issue of proteasomes. And proteasomes can break down proteins that misfold in the cytoplasm. Where else are proteins turned over? They can be turned over in lysosomes of cells, because lysosomes have a lot of hydrolytic proteases that can break down proteins to all 20 amino acids. So on boards, if they were to ask you, inside cells, where are proteins degraded? You say one of two compartments, either in lysosomes or in the cytoplasm, because that's where proteosomes are located in the cytoplasm of cells. In this figure are the essential amino acids. Now the word essential, all 20 amino acids are needed for human life. But the word essential in nutrition means the body cannot make the amino acids and you have to get them from the diet. They are essential to be obtained in the diet to sustain life. And this grouping of amino acids that are shown here are the essential amino acids that you must get from the diet because the human body does not have metabolic pathways to synthesize them. So all 20 amino acids are needed, required for protein synthesis. But of the 20 amino acids, there are 10 of them that are essential, and they are listed here. Arginine, histidine, isoleucine, leucine, and lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan, and valine. Arginine, you see arginine has the asterisk. The asterisk means, in this example, arginine is essential only during periods of positive nitrogen balance. Now, in a minute, we're we'll going to be talking about and reviewing what does that mean. But it's essential only during periods of positive nitrogen balance. So in me and you, now think about this. In me and you, if we're adult individuals, is arginine essential? Are you in positive nitrogen balance? And the answer is no. You should be in nitrogen balance meaning the amount of nitrogen coming into your body right now in the form of protein or amino acids should be equal to the amount of nitrogen you are excreting every day in the form of ammonia or urea. The amount of nitrogen coming into the body is equal to the amount of nitrogen being excreted. You and I should be in nitrogen balance. So arginine in an adult individual who is normal, arginine is not essential. So there are only nine essential amino acids in adults. But keep in mind the asterisk, we'll be reviewing that issue in just a minute about positive nitrogen balance. Nitrogen balance in adults. It's the normal condition in which the amount of nitrogen coming into the mouth every day in the form of protein or amino acids is equal to the amount of nitrogen being excreted every day in urine in the form of ammonia, urea, or creatinine. So as adults, we should be in nitrogen balance. Negative nitrogen balance is a pathology situation. It occurs when nitrogen loss exceeds incorporation. Not as much nitrogen coming into the mouth every day, but much more being excreted into the urine. 
and most often it's associated with quashiorcor. It can also have it with dietary deficiency of one essential amino acid, starvation conditions, uncontrolled diabetes, or infections. But quashiorcor is the most often situation in which negative nitrogen balance occurs. Now, when you're not eating enough protein, then you're not eating enough essential amino acids. And if one essential amino acid is not coming into the mouth in sufficient quantities, then the cells in the body will be unable to synthesize proteins properly. And if there's a decrease of amino acids, one major protein that will not be made by the liver properly is albumin. And when there's not albumin being made by the liver, then as a result, everything albumin is supposed to do will not occur properly. And one of the functions of albumin in the bloodstream is to maintain osmotic balance. So without an essential amino acid in quashiorcor, albumin levels will be diminished and the osmotic balance levels will be diminished and we end up with the edema because the albumin is supposed to draw the water into the bloodstream. But without the albumin, then the water stays in the interstitial space. There's a related condition that you often hear about regarding quashiorcor, and that's called marasmus. Now, what marasmus is, it's a deficiency of protein and energy nutrients. So it's a nutritional problem. Not very much protein as well as energy nutrients coming into the mouth, like carbohydrates or fats. And it's usually seen in children less than one year of age. The major difference between marasmus and quashiorcor is that there's no edema in marasmus. Positive nitrogen balance occurs when the amount of nitrogen incorporated exceeds the amount of nitrogen being excreted every day. The best example of this is growth. In infant, a newborn is in positive nitrogen balance. The amount of nitrogen coming to the body is greater than the amount of nitrogen being excreted every day. And in addition, where you might see positive nitrogen balance is a person who is in pregnancy, somebody recovering from an injury or surgery, they're making proteins, more protein must be coming into the body every day than being excreted, or a person recovering from negative nitrogen balance. And now remember earlier when we talked about the essential amino acids, they're arginine. Arginine is needed in large amounts because they need to make histones. So anybody in positive nitrogen balance, and again, the best example is a newborn is in positive nitrogen balance. They must eat a lot of arginine from the protein that they're eating. And arginine along with lysine. Now remember, lysine and arginine dominate histones. They need histones to make chromosomes, which in all cells are actively multiplying. So they need to make histones, and therefore they need arginine and lysine. Lysine already is essential, and in positive nitrogen balance, arginine becomes essential. Whereas in me and you, because most of our cells, because we're adults, most of our cells are in G0 phase, arginine is not essential. We can generate sufficient amount of arginine by the urea cycle. But if you're in positive nitrogen balance, it must be obtained from the diet, and that's what would be found in children as well as newborns or persons recovering from surgery.